The molecular shape also determines the polarity of a molecule. Polarity is a separation in charge that leads to a molecule having an uneven distribution of electrons or a dipole. Dipoles happen because there's a difference in electronegativity between two atoms. There's an unequal sharing of the electrons and a partial positive and partial negative charge. We are not creating ions in this case. These are just partial positives. So the red in our water molecule, this is a partial negative charge. There are more electrons on that oxygen than there are on the hydrogens, which results in a partial positive charge on the hydrogen. And so our water molecules are polar. So electronegativity is a way that we measure how much the element wants to pull electrons towards itself. Our general trend is that electronegativity increases as we go up the periodic table and as we go to the right. We have an increase in electronegativity. We're just looking at the trend, and we're not actually looking at the individual numbers that are on the chart. In general, the further apart things are on the periodic table, the greater the difference. There is one exception that we'll look at in more depth uh, in a little bit but that is hydrogen and carbon. They are pretty close in electronegativity. When we look at the difference in electronegativities, it helps us to decide how large our dipoles are. We range from anything from homopolar or nonpolar, where there is no difference in electronegativity. This is when we have the same atom or element attached to itself, such as diatomic elements, where we equally share the electron. Remember, diatomic elements are hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. They exist in nature attached to each other. As we increase our electronegativity, we get larger and larger dipoles. The little delta signs that you see, that stands for partial. So we have a partial positive and a partial negative charge. This can increase all the way up to where we completely transfer the electron. This happens when we have metals and nonmetals. And they're on opposite ends of the periodic table, like metals and nonmetals. This is our ionic bond, or ion, our ionic bonds that form between metals and nonmetals. So any bond that occurs between two different atoms will be polar. The only nonpolar bonds are between the same atom, the same element. So practice by trying to determine if these bonds are polar or nonpolar. Pause the video and label these bonds. If we look at nitrogen and hydrogen, because they are different, it is going to be a polar bond. Our nitrogen is going to be more negative. Our hydrogen is going to be more positive. And so we frequently represent this as an arrow with a plus sign on the positive side of the, the bond or the, the less electronegative element. 
carbon and oxygen is also a polar bond. And in this case, our carbon is closer to the metals. Our oxygen is further away. So our oxygen will be more electronegative. The carbon will be more electropositive. Nitrogen, nitrogen, they are the same element. And so this is a nonpolar bond. Hydrogen and oxygen are different elements. And so it will be polar. Our oxygen will be the negative. The hydrogen will be the positive end of our polar bond. When we consider the polarity of an entire molecule, we need to think about the shape, which means we need to know the Lewis structure of the molecule. If the molecule is not symmetric, it is going to be po polar. If it is symmetric, that means it is nonpolar. There will be a more even distribution of the electrons in the molecule. So if we look at our water, our water is not symmetrical. It is left to right, but not top to bottom. And so this is going to be a polar molecule. The electrons are going to be pulled toward the more electronegative element, oxygen. If we look at carbon dioxide, our, carbon, our oxygens are more electronegative. The electrons will be pulled toward the oxygen. So we have polar bonds. But we have a nonpolar molecule because the electrons are more equally distributed throughout our symmetric molecule. If we look at our tetrahedral molecule, we put our center element in the center, and the uh, outside elements are all the same. It will be a nonpolar molecule, pulling the electrons very evenly to the outside of the of the atom or of the molecule. If our outside atoms are different, and we draw a circle and we touch a different atom, then we are going to have a polar molecule. If we look at our trigonal planar, our trigonal planar, if all of the elements around the outside are the same, we will be nonpolar. If we have an element that is different on the outside element, when we draw a circle and we touch a different element, then we will have a polar molecule. Trigonal pyramidal. If we draw our circle, now we have to be a little more careful and include that center atom in our circle. If all of the elements are the same, it will be nonpolar. If our center element is different than the outside elements, then we will be polar. For our linear molecules, if the outside elements are the same, our molecule will be nonpolar. If the two outer atoms are different, then there's going to be a greater pull towards one of those elements for the electrons. And making, and that will make it a polar molecule. When we look at bent, the bent molecules, we have to again include that center atom in our circle. If all of the elements are identical, we will be nonpolar. If our bent molecule has a different center atom than the outside, then we will be polar. Use the following molecules to determine if they are polar or nonpolar. Pause the video to make your determination.
Our arsenic trihydride is trigonal pyramidal. And so when we draw our circle, we have to include that center atom in it because the center atom is different from the outside atoms. This is a polar molecule. Water, we have oxygen attached to hydrogen in a bent shape. We have to include the oxygen in our circle because oxygen and the hydrogen are different. This is also a polar molecule. Cyanide is a linear shape, but the two elements are different from each other. And so this is also a polar molecule. Methane, carbon attached to singly bonded to four hydrogen. We draw our circle around the outside. We are only touching hydrogen. And so this is a non-polar molecule. Carbon dioxide is linear. We draw our circle touching the outside atoms, which are both oxygen. So this is nonpolar. Sulfur trioxide, trigonal planar. Trigonal planar, we draw around the outside. They are all oxygen, so this would also be a nonpolar molecule. The polarity helps us to determine the solubility of these covalent compounds. So we do not have a list of rules like we did with the ionic compounds, but we do have. A guideline that we can follow. That guideline is like dissolves like. What that means, if we have two polar substances, they will be soluble. If we have two nonpolar substances, They will also be soluble in each other. However, if we have a polar and a nonpolar, that will be insoluble. So like dissolves like. This helps us to determine the solubility of our covalently bonded compounds. An example would be oil and water. Our oil contains long chains of carbon and hydrogen containing bonds because they are carbon and hydrogen containing. This is a nonpolar molecule. Our water is polar because they are different. They are not like dissolved like. They are unlike. They are insoluble. You may have experience with this if you've ever tried to mix oil and water. The oil sits on top, the water stays on the bottom.